Hi everyone, this is a video for how to support your children with early reading based on our progression to the mustard stage of reading. At Elmhurst we are aiming for every child to be a successful reader, so we place high importance on phonics and reading and support the development of these skills in year one through daily phonics lessons, a daily story read to them by the teacher, well-planned English lessons with opportunities for reading throughout, well-planned reading instruction lessons, inviting reading areas and opportunities for reading across the environment and one-to-one -one reading support. We've ensured that our reading and phonics teaching are closely aligned through the Little Wondle Letters and Sounds revised phonics scheme and the Big Cat Collins reading book scheme. The children in our year one classes should be accessing the phase four books at the moment, which is the new green band and we'll be moving on to phase five books which are the new mustard band at the end of autumn two after we have assessed them. Teaching your child to read early and well has multiple benefits and is the key to your child's academic future. This is because at a younger age learning is faster than it will be as a child grows older. A child who learns to read joyfully at home grows in self-confidence and independence and reading improves listening and attention skills and concentration as well. So it's so important that as a school, we make sure that children are reading lots, but also as parents, you need to make sure that your children are reading lots at home too. Reading also improves linguistic skills. Early readers have a richer vocabulary, correct grammar, improved writing, better spelling, and more articulate oral communication. Early readers can recognise a larger number of words by sight, which enables them to learn more from and about their environment. Um, their proficiency in reading enables them to comprehend more of what they are reading. Reading also improves general knowledge and sparks curiosity about people, places and things, both through fiction and non-fiction. It exposes the child to a range of problem solving techniques and ignites the child's creativity and imagination. Now let's look at effective ways of sharing the Big Cat Collins books with your children. The latest research says that effective ways of sharing books and poems are to use a balance of reading styles. The research suggests the most effective styles are dialogic, where the children are active participants in the reading. So this means that they talk about and around the book rather than just focusing on the text. Pause reading, where the adult pauses and encourages the children to talk. Use of props or objects, which is particularly effective for children with low levels of language. And use of elaborative reminiscing, so where the adult and children relate events in the story to events in the children's life. It's important that over time, children have a balance of these styles. At Elmhurst School, your child will receive one Big Cat Collins book per week. Please ensure that your child reads five times a week. You can use these styles to vary the way that you read with your children during the week. So how do we teach reading with phase five books? Well, it all starts at the beginning with prediction and discussion. So look at the front cover, talk about the title and make a few predictions about either the story or the fact if it's fiction or non-fiction. This uses inference skills, which are really important for developing at this age. You could take a picture, walk through the pages of the book and enjoy the illustrations, talking about what you see, looking at the expressions on characters' faces, the setting and the use of colour, and predict what might happen next. You can enjoy the pictures and extend the children's vocabulary by introducing them to new words which describe the things in the pictures and explain what they mean. For example, you could ask, can you think of a different word for happy? This encourages children to delve into their knowledge of different vocabulary and to explore trickier words. In our Big Cat Collins books, there is this page, as you can see on the picture, which is just inside the front cover. It's important to do this phonics check before reading. So look at that inside page of the book and ask your child to practice saying each sound out loud. You can read the words in the next box together. These words should use sounds that your child is either learning or has learnt. You can read the common exception words, which are words that cannot be sounded out in the usual way. And check the understanding of trickier words for your child then you're ready to start reading the book. So now let's look at the actual process of reading the book. You can read the story together with you acting as a model for your child. Use expression and if possible props to add drama and detail. Use different voices for each character and add sound effects. 
It's particularly important if your child has not yet developed good expression for reading, particularly with dialogue, that you be the model. You can model and encourage the use, of, the use of new vocabulary and make sure that you check that your child understands the meaning of these. If they don't, you need to explain it with context. And help your child to expand their sentences or thoughts by encouraging them to add further information. So you can do this by asking W questions. Who, where, when, why and what? The most important of which is why, because it really develops those explanation and reasoning skills. At the back of the book, there is a text map. It will either be one big picture or lots of little pictures. They can use this to then read the text again. So talking about what they see and following the journey of the story. You can then finish with some comprehension questions. There are comprehension questions on the back cover, inside the back cover of the book, but you can also ask your own. For example, what pictures help you to tell the story in text? What was your favourite part of the story and why? And have you ever had an experience like the one in the story? If your child shows a particular interest in the book, think about other reading that they could do. Maybe you could look up some more information on the internet or go to the local library to find out more about the topic. Maybe your child could draw a picture related to the story. It's all about fostering a sense of wonder. We do have our library in school uh, where we have high quality books which provide our children with a range of new vocabulary and help them to develop a love of books and reading. We generally visit the library once a week, COVID allowing, and the children have the opportunity to listen to a story read out by a teacher and then to go and choose their own book and go and read in groups. At some point in the year, we will be able to start taking home library books. When you read a library book, even from the school library or from a local library with your child, focus on building anticipation by looking at the front cover and making predictions, sharing your passion and enthusiasm when reading, Encourage the children to join in with repeated refrains. Use different voices and expression. Trigger curiosity and invite participation by wondering out loud. So for example, you could say, I wonder why that happened. I think that means. You can read stories over and over again. Hearing words repeated is crucial to children learning new language. So let's take a closer look at phonics and early reading. So phonics is recommended as the first strategy that children should be taught in helping them to learn how to read. Uh, words are made up of small units of sound called phonemes and the way that a phoneme is written is called a grapheme. So phonics teaches children to be able to listen carefully and identify the phonemes that make up the, each word and this helps children to read words and also to be able to write them using the graphemes. So using phonics, children are taught how to blend and this is when children say the sounds that make up a word and merge them together until they can hear what the word is. So for example, k l o u d cloud. Below are the graphemes we are already learning with our children in preparation for them reading the phase five books. So um, at the end of last half term, we covered A for play, O for cloud, OI for toy and E for each. And then this half term, we're doing E for bird, I for pie, U for blue and rescue, U for unicorn, O for go, I for tiger, A for paper, E for he. Split digraph, A for shake, I for time, O for home and U, U for rude and cute. Split digraph E for these. U for U for chew and new. E for shield or for claw. And that's it. And then we look at growing the code, which is how all these graphemes relate to each other with having the same phoneme. So here's our overview for uh, when we teach the different phases in year one. So in autumn one, we do a phase three and four review as they should have covered these in reception and we begin teaching phase five. Uh, at this stage, they should be reading the what is the new green stage, which is made up of the old blue and yellow bands, which is phase four. Then in autumn two, we are teaching phase five. We do still review phase three and four sounds within that. Um, so don't worry about them forgetting those sounds. They are in there um, during our teaching. Um, and then we'll be reading, continuing to read phase four books, the green stage, and then assessing for phase five mustard um, towards the end of the term. And then in spring one to summer two, we will continue to teach phase five. Um, and they should be reading mustard stage then throughout the rest of the year. Mustard stage is kind of split up into smaller groups within that based on where your child is at too.
Each week we share a short presentation on the graphemes we've learned in school, which is shared on Google Classroom. Um, please share this with your child at home uh, and encourage them to teach you the sounds they know. They are sounds that we have learnt that week, so they should know them. There are also words using those sounds for your child to sound out and blend during the video, and this is modelled by the teacher who has recorded the video. Um, and then there is a home learning activity that goes along with it using some different words that use the same graphemes we have learnt. So I'd recommend that you watch that video before you attempt that homework just so that you've got um, an idea yourself on how to say the graphemes if you don't already know and to remind your children of how to say them too. Um, revisiting previous sounds is crucial for embedding phonics so it's really important that you take a look at those at home um, as I said, during our phonics lessons, we also go back and review previous sounds and they are very much embedded throughout our learning too. We do understand that every child is unique and may develop at a different pace to others. Children who are not ready to move on to the next reading stage of Mustard by the end of Autumn 2 will be and are being given additional support with their reading and phonics. Thank you. We hope you found this presentation useful on how to support your child's early reading at home. If you ever have any questions, please don't hesitate to speak to Miss Dunbar, Mrs Spearpoint-Stoll or Miss Anderson.